Allahu Welcome to our audience that is viewing from home during this lockdown. Um, my name is Kashmir Maryam and this is my sister Aisha. Aisha, would you like to introduce yourself and what we do as the Strangers Organization? Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My name is Aisha and I am part of an organization called The Strangers. And our goal is to revive the message of Islam. And we do this through uh, different, different means. One of the means is through spoken word poetry, through the collective voice of Muslim poets around the world. Um, and just being able to clear up misconceptions. So that's our main goal. Um, yes, Kash. Yeah, excellent. Jazakallah khair. Uh, so the work that we do as the strangers is we host a lot of uh, poetry slams. A lot of the time they're, um, you know, in person. And so we have our poets go up on stage. They compete for trophies um, and prizes. And we just have a good time. It's basically to platform the Muslim voice so that we can portray the true message of Islam through the art of spoken word poetry. Um, so it's a creative art, it's something that is uh, powerful and empowering. Um, and that's what we wanted to do for you today. So we have a great show lined up for you all. Um, we hope that you enjoy watching. Um, and I just wanted to clarify a few things that are a little bit different about uh, slam poetry uh, versus written poetry or any other type of poetry, Shakespeare, whatever, you, whatever type of poetry you are into. Um, so the difference between slam poetry is that it is um, about the content of the poem. So how deep is the lyrical content? How, um, how relevant is it to the audience? How, how powerful is the, the, the methods that are used to articulate what is being said in the poem? And second of all, um, the, the powerful thing about slam poetry and probably one of the more important traits of slam poetry is that it is heavily about the way in which the message is revealed to the audience. So it's not just about reading from a sheet of paper, it's about how that message is delivered. Um, so that's something that we put a lot of emphasis on as the strangers and we do uh, with all of our poets as well. So inshallah today you'll be hearing some slam poetry and um, I hope that you enjoy the show and all of the poets that we have lined up. Uh, there are three simple rules that we have for the poets. That is number one, the content has to be um, appropriate. So no curse words. Um, uh, there, there is no inappropriate content, um, and our poets do understand that. The second rule is that uh, we have to make sure that the poem is under five minutes. Um, and number three is just to be respectful of everyone that is up there performing. Everyone is sharing something that is meaningful to them, and that's something very personal, and we have to respect that because that's very sanctified. Um, so yeah, so without any further ado, I would like to introduce our judge for this evening. Her name is Tahani Salah. Is Tahani there? I'm here. As Assalamu alaikum, Tahani. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, we're doing good. Perfect. So I have Tahani your bio here. I'm just going to read it. And um, hopefully that will explain to everyone your background in poetry. I personally, I know Tahani from before. Um, she's a slam poet. So she knows a thing or two, or more than a thing or two about performance. And that's one of the reasons we chose to have her on our platform today. Um, and that's something that means a lot to us because I think to be a writer is one thing, but to be a performer is something, um, is something else. So, uh, Jazakallah her for joining us today. Thank so, you. Tahani Salah is an educator, poet, and activist based in Brooklyn, New York, with a bloodline to Palestine. She's a graduate of Columbia University, a former professor of curriculum development at the Cooney Graduate Center. She's also a member of the New York Rican Slam team. She competed internationally and holds many slam titles from Europe to Africa. Tani has also been featured on HBO's Deaf Poetry Jam. She is a passionate about peace and activism and carries that into the classroom as an educator, showing how life creates art and using it all as a tool of expression. As an artist dedicated to bringing light and solutions to communities where people's voices have been silenced, Sahani has performed at a number of world famous stages, including the Apollo Theater in New York City, to universities in the US, South Africa, Germany, Canada, Palestine, Jordan, and many more. <laughs> Mashallah. Okay, so Sahani, you told me to pick one or two lines from your bio, but I felt like everyone needed to hear that. 
Um, so welcome. Uh, with a little poem that my sister and I compiled together. Um, Aisha, I'm going to let you introduce this piece. So go ahead. So the Strangers Organization is, like I said, an organization of a collective, um, you know, work work of uh, poets from around the world, Muslim poets around the world, where we try and advocate for certain things which are happening um, that we feel very strongly about. Now, one of them things is uh, what Sister Hala actually mentioned, and um, it's the issue in China right now with the Uyghur Muslims. So for the last three months or so, maybe two or three months, We've been running a campaign through Instagram um, where we've been trying to get poets together, where we've been trying to get people uh, to uh, submit their lines, their works, and then we wanted to compile a letter to the Chinese embassy. Um, we will be working together with um, an organization called Save Uyghur, where we got most of our information from. And um, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, all praise to God, we have the final collection of work. This is not just mine and Kashmir's work. This is a collection of many poets. And we all write their names down, inshallah, as honorable mentions afterwards. But the point of the poem was that it's not from any individual person. It's from the Muslim. Um, and just to go back with one final thing before I go into the actual poem, uh, a letter was written um, from... Uh, I, I, I don't know who it was exactly, but it was written and 22 countries signed it. And they, um, in Huffington Post, they actually said that the Muslims didn't say anything about the situation in China with the Uyghur Muslims. Now, just a quick background, the Uyghur Muslims are a um, group of Muslims who are right now being, um, they're, they're going through an ethnic cleansing in China. They are in something called re-education camps. They are being, um, they are being abused in many ways. Their identity being wiped out. Hopefully this letter will explain more. Oh. Aisha, are you there? I think you're freezing. Okay, Aisha has frozen, so... I am going to just go straight into the poem, inshallah, until she gets back. Um, so I will be doing the first half, and it is in the format of a letter. So this is an open letter to the Chinese embassy. I hope that you enjoy, um, and I hope that you are able to reflect on the kinds of things that we talk about. Bismillah rahman rahim Fact. The Chinese government, or the CCP, has created a militarized police state with an estimated 1.5 million people, or more, in ethnic concentration camps. At first you denied this on all counts, then you said it was voluntary vocational training and boarding school, now you're saying that they are re-education centers for people who may not have committed any crimes, but who are deemed at risk by the government. Dear Chinese Embassy, Would you kill a man? a woman, a generation, because they say they believe in one God. I speak in many voices, but all are one. China has beauty, but with beauty is pain, and with pain there is injustice. You see, there is a smog above your country. Its smoke has penetrated the lungs of many, whereby the innocent have been quarantined behind cages with bars before COVID-19 had ever been heard of, who would have ever thought that the guilty would arrest the innocent? That sickness has spread. It has spread in the thick blanket of silence of the world which stood by and watched its birth, its death, its rebirth and its karma. It has expanded outwardly to all that have breathed your words and allowed you to try to rewrite the words of God to fit your values. It has constricted the universal truth of justice, for we have been guilty too. We, the world, have been distracted, and in our distraction we can no longer breathe. We are fighting for survival. I speak not of a novel virus that takes the wise, but a disease which has spread through the whole of the body, the body of many nations of which the hand did not attend to the aching limbs. A part of us is suffering. Our entire body is hurting. 
we have been bleeding for years and the China that I see now is not the China that was the China that I see now off Instagram accounts and tweets because the news is too afraid to report on your misdeeds is a nation whose government has succumbed to a disease far worse than the coronavirus. We are only as safe as the most oppressed in society. So a baby born is torn from the mother's breast and placed in re-education camps where they will be taught to recite the merits of this diseased government like a mantra, we bleed. Through concentration camps you exploit the re-education, here is the peace you constantly proclaim. Our hearts are in pieces, our mouths detained. We face economic advantages and advances that starve and maim educational opportunities that divide and tame ethnic unity to, to prevent unification, colorful dances, cruelty, twisted, so each step is beautiful agony in a colonial standard of beauty and each breath is the slow erasure of our identity. Never again, they said, after the Holocaust. Is genocide okay if our screams have been silenced? I wonder if you borrowed Hitler's blueprint. I am trying to say that we have seen the camps. We have seen the forced labor. We have seen the bands. Bands on the woman's veil over her head. Bands on the places of worship. Bands on our names, our identity, our choice, you see. You claim you are stopping terrorism, but the cries of a thousand lies are heard, yet the silence of truth is prolonged. Trying to stop terrorism by creating extremism. Claiming that you are re-educating the already educated, are you making assumptions based on terrorists that claim to be Muslim? A young girl is forced into marriage with a Han Chinese man. You are performing an ethnic cleansing of the Uyghurs and you are in the process also erasing the Chinese identity. You have failed your country. And when I think of China now, I will not see that image of jade mountains and cherry blossom trees. The Great Wall is no longer your trademark. The death camps are. We are the brothers and sisters of the Muslims in your camps. We are the brothers and sisters of the women whose beds you send your soldiers to sleep in, of the forced marriages to ethnically cleanse a race of a followers of a creed that will always prevail. You have tried to make a slave so you can ban me, ridicule me, exile me, kill me, strip me of everything but my dignity. Afraid to reveal our identity for its revelation will only bring misery. Oh no, you cannot have that. Allah is sufficient for me and he is the best disposer of all affairs. Where is your morality? What did they do to deserve this? Just do it logos hanging in factory lines above our heads like nooses. Trying to create apples that don't fall too far from your trees, but we see Chinese embassy, we see now your greatest fear. Is not the slaves in shackles that you compounded behind your cages, it is the slave of the mind. And this is the reason why you have tried to take ours, young or old, our freedom is in jail, with millions, yet peace prevails. Religion is our choice and your re-education has pushed us to our belief in God. Now we are certain of him. In your polluted war we have seen beyond the shadows you tried to catch our hearts with and the night has a thousand eyes and we one nation can finally see the daylight through one. We do not need your prayer mats to bow our heads down to the ground to God. We do not need the written words of God to reiterate its miraculous daily upon our tongue. We have it in our hearts and we draw it on the walls of our cells. Cells which are contained within our bodies enclosed to task is the obligation of our love for him. We are free. Our souls are free. 
we do not need names to know who you are because we are and we will always be and we speak for the part of our body which hurts most because this is what it means to be Muslim. It is to feel the pain of one part, to intercede and speak up, if only with our hearts. And I can tell you that these brothers and sisters protest you from the very depths of their beating hearts, hearts which you have sold to gain money, but found that they cannot be sold because we have found richness elsewhere. We know, and God knows even more. So we ask you, as the voices of many, to free our brothers and sisters, free my brethren, yours sincerely, the entire Muslim Ummah. Thank you. Um, so that concludes uh, this poem and that concludes also this event. Oh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. Jazakallah <laughs> for sharing Kashmir and uh, we had a conversation before as well and I told you why I didn't want to but alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed it even better um, you were saying and carry on you were just closing yeah I was just closing and um, I was just saying that also this poem initially we were supposed to provide it in two and recite it but um, due to connection issues it didn't work out that way um, but Qadrullah masha'a fa'ala uh, I don't want to keep anyone wait for any longer. It's already 10:30. Um, but uh, I want to thank everyone here. I want to thank primarily uh, for hosting us on their platform every single year when we host this. It's just an amazing success, and I can say Alhamdulillah from the bottom of my heart. I think this was phenomenally successful. So Jazakallah Khair. I want to say a special Jazakallah Khair to uh, Tahani for doing this, for doing the very very difficult job of judging. It can never be. Thank you so much. I mean, Allah reward you and um and uh, you know for taking the time out you're also a mother so you know it, i know it's difficult juggling uh duties so you know, i will be for that and um yeah do you have any closing remarks aisha um, I just wanted to say that um, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless all of the viewers for attending. Um, I pray that we all benefited from an event without our poets. Um, now, saying that as well, um, I'm not sure if you can see me. Okay, you could see me now. Um, no further ado, uh, you can find the strangers on Instagram. Our website is in the works, inshallah. So please do uh, definitely follow up with more information about the Uyghur campaign, uh, which is a current campaign that we're doing. We hope you enjoyed the letter, the final compilation. Um, a lot of heart went into it from our poets. And thank you again to everyone. And of course, Assistant Tahani, you did an amazing job. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And Ikna. Of course, Ikna. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly i just want to say the greatest thank you to all of our poets for contributing their pieces each one was mind-blowing and touched my heart and i'm sincerely saying that as someone who's been to a lot of poetry slams and had a lot of poetry over the years as tahani and as aisha can both attest to we had an amazing level of talent tonight and um, so may allah reward you all and yeah i'm gonna close it right there and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh